Dutch Sense here. It is 10.03 p.m. Central Time on Friday, August 5th, 2011. And I hope everyone's having a good weekend. I wanted to show you something that I've been pouring over for a little while now. And this all arises from, I get several people who still come on to my harp and harp ring videos. And they say that harp can't be used for anything up below the ionosphere, that it's for ionospheric research. And so I've come over, first of all, I've got all this listed on my main Dutch Sense page, and I'll put the link down below. I've showed this link several times, and it's a huge post I've done. It just goes on and on and on. It gives all the locations and a thousand links. But I just wanted to show you the patents for HARP. And then as I was looking over this today, it finally dawned on me what we're seeing with scalar square activity. So, and we can prove that it's HARP. So let me just show you first Here's the first HARP patent that I have listed on here. And I'm sure there are more, but this is just several of the important ones. And here it is. This should debunk anybody who says that it's only for the ionosphere. Artificial ionospheric mirror composed of a plasma layer, which can be tilted. And you can read all this, and I'll just read it to you. This invention relates to generation of an artificial ionospheric mirror, an AIM, or a plasma layer in the atmosphere. Now, just stop right there. A plasma layer in the atmosphere. Okay, and uh, there is no plasma layer in the atmosphere. It has to be created. And the way you create a plasma field in the atmosphere is through spraying of certain particles up in the atmosphere that aid in frequency manipulation to cause a layer of plasma. And that's the, the wave. See these waves here? That's the wavy harp cloud that we all see from time to time. And they call it harp clouds now because they form in a wave. Then what they do is through a series of ground-based systems, harp, this would be harp right here, the grid, it projects up into the atmosphere and it projects down to this is the tilted mirror so they create this with spraying they're able to create a tiltable mirror depending on which way they they manipulate it with frequency to reflect down to a house or to another dish that reflects higher up into the cloud itself back down to planes which are flying beneath okay so let's go on the aim is used like the ionosphere to reflect RF energy over great distances. A tiltable aim is created by a heater antenna controlled in phase and frequency. The heater antenna is the ground-based system, the dish, the harp ring that we're seeing. And they're launching it from harp or from other facilities. It comes back down to the ground-based system that then relays it on. And so we're seeing these relay systems pop up from time to time at different cities and different spots. They've apparently put them at Nexrad sites. Let me continue on. The heater antenna phase shift scans a beam to paint a plasma layer. In other words, it's, it scans out a beam. And we see the beams in what several of the HARP researchers call beam attacks. And it's not actually an attack now. I think we can determine it's actually part of the same system. Frequency is changed to refocus at continually higher altitudes to tilt the plasma layer. Okay, and that explains our concentric rings inside of each other. As they go up, they change frequency, and it goes basically through the spectrum. Now, okay, that's this patent here, and they've got a couple diagrams, how, how it's the control module, focus points, that kind of stuff. But I want to take you back now and take you one patent down. Is it still part of this first one? Maybe it is. Ah, okay, it is. It's in the first patent still. Great. Okay, see this here? See this square and how it's being projected down from 22? Let's see if they have 22 labeled on here. They don't have 22 labeled on here. So there is pages missing, of course. They're probably classified. But this is supposed to be the atmosphere up here. This is a point of reflection down here. Okay? And look what it projects down into, a square. Here's the wavy clouds up above. This, this represents the different waves in the clouds, the harp cloud. 
and look what it does. They reflect it down in a tiltable mirror, and it comes down to the ground in a square fashion. They show it here multiple points, like a staircase or a sawtooth pattern, and then multiple squares down below. X, Y, Z axis, of course, axis. And you, you can see it. It's right here in a diagram, how they project a tiltable mirror to reflect a harp frequency, which is broadcast from a square station. The square station comes up, bounces back down to the ground, where it's picked up by a receiving station, the circular station, and then relayed on. So that explains why we see a square overlay on top of a round ring return. They're beaming it down to the round receiver. The round receiver is sitting there like a catcher's mitt, waiting to catch the square frequency to relay it on. So anyways, there's a lot of good reading over here. You can just poke through these patents. There's all kinds of different stuff. And then you can read the military documentation on it, owning the weather by 2025. Okay, it's got a whole index on it, and you can just pick through here. This is on a dot .mil website, weather as a force multiplier, how they intend to use it. And it's not just us. You can go read about the Chinese or the Russians. You can read how there's private companies that are doing weather modification using different, different systems. I have a picture of one right here. Here's a frequency generation system. North American Weather Consultants Incorporated. They use these to create rain. And they, they talk in depth scientifically about how they do it. You can order them. You can pay these companies to come make it rain in certain areas. Um, here's the buoy project. They, pl they placed harp buoys around the entire planet, one of which, it was a, a project, and that's the one we're reading about here, was down near New Zealand. And they placed this at what's called a, a conjugate point. And we can go back to the patents, and I'll show you what a conjugate point is. Okay, here are the patents. We have to go one patent down. Okay, see this right here? This comes up and comes back down to the Earth. Now, as it comes up and comes back down to the Earth, you can imagine the Earth's magnetic field being a whole bunch of these. It's not just one. And the signal from HARP goes up into these bands of mag magnetic energy and comes back down to a point on the South Pole and vice versa. And so one of the con that's called a conjugate point, the point where it comes back down to Earth. And they can place a relay there, which if you go read the documentation on the, on the HARP one hop experiment, they can bounce it around out here for an indefinite period of time. They can literally put a relay station back there where the signal they found when it reaches a certain point down here, not at the surface, but before it reaches the surface, the resistance is as such that it bounces it back to its original point, back to HARP. And that's how it works. So they place these, uh, these buoys around the entire planet to do that at, at spots where, well, you know, where you can't have a land-based system. So here's another ground-based frequency generator. I've got pictures of HARP rings how they create the artificial ionospheric mirror in the atmosphere. I've got station maps of all the Digison, Radioson, VLF facilities, where they're located, how it's an international consortium of, of companies and governments doing this. It's not just the United States and HARP. If you want to control the weather in the United States, you're going to have to start over in Russia and vice versa. If you want to control the weather in Russia, you have to start in the United States. So it requires a, a cooperative effort between these different companies, different states, different organizations. Here's an actual picture of the buoy, the HARP one hop buoy. Um, here's the documentation from Stanford. Read the abstract, the whole introduction. It's a pretty long PDF. It explains in depth how they intend to measure it, how they built it, it's moorings, how it was moored, how they're going to deliver it, the whole bit. 
So I hope this answers some questions. Um, there is one other thing I could show you right here really quickly, I suppose. And that would be just some shots of it, of the harp ring and the scalar squares, in case you're new to this topic and you have no idea what we're talking about. And this link will be down below as well. This is on my blog and it's descriptions of how it works. And these come from government documents. These are not just made by someone. Okay, here's an actual 3D cloud shot. So you know it's not just on radar. It actually occurred on cloud cover too. Diagrams of how the radar flares occur. And then shot after shot of, of different types of systems they're using. This is out of Minot, North Dakota several years ago. Here's a shot I did. The concentric rings, the catcher's mitt that's waiting for the harp signal. Here's a vortex generation system. Again, frequency manipulation. Here are the scalar squares that I'm talking about. These are the squares that come down on top of the rings. You've got a ring that appears and then a square that appears on top of it. Or the cooling or heating of a storm. As seen by this, I captured this in the middle of winter. Here it is on 3D radar. More shots of it. This is in Australia, the Jorn Spiral. Here we go, going back to 2005. Here's one showing up on an actual photo. The size of, of the, the area that they can actually broadcast out to. Here's one I did myself. This was this past winter out of the base in the Northwest. This is how they can happen all in the same day. They, they do this as a relay. You see how it first goes there, then it probably goes up off the atmosphere, back down to here, up off, back down to here. Another good shot of it. Right, some of these are very impressive and you can see the level that they're operating on. And when you see the levels they're broadcasting in, it's the same levels that, that these documents over on the patent sites show that they're operating on, the, on those frequency levels. Right, this is not your normal NEXRAD signatures. These are flares that appear like this one up here. It's like a giant target. So we, you can just keep up. Whoop. Sorry. <laughs> you can just keep on going down the list here.